like day. Steve Sheffer. Bound chicken wow wow. And the super trooper. Here we are in the back of the trooper. Special guest Mike Day. <laughs> Hello. Mike, what are we doing? Uh, so next up, we're gonna try to play with rear axle stuff, figure out links and all that. First, we need to see how far up we can tuck a tire. So um, we're clearing out this kind of area because basically, you know, a 40 doesn't fit in stock wheel well anymore. So we're gonna cut a bunch of that stuff out, kind of see how much space we need to tuck it up high enough to kind of match the front. Maybe a little more up travel than the front. And uh, yeah, figure that out before we do links and coilover mounts and everything else. So the only area on the trooper that really had a lot of body rust was right here. So we're gonna be cutting that out. And we'll have to extend that wheel well back. So we're gonna just cut a bunch of shit out of the way. Yeah, and then someone like slathered on some sort of putty here. So putty and uh, the aluminum tape. So <laughs> kind of yeah. be cooler if they didn't, but. Yeah, nice structural fix there. Yeah. So. Cool. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna start cutting stuff. Yeah. Be good. Mike is marking out here where we're gonna cut that fender in half, and then move the rearward section backwards towards the tail light, which will open up that wheel opening and give us more room to fit the tire. Before we cut this, the tire wouldn't fit into that area. So we had to go in and take out the harness that runs to the taillight. It actually went through the inner structure through a grommet. So we popped the taillight off, we were able to peel back that harness and get that section off. Keep cutting, we could put 42s on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Ew. Yeah. It's just, fine. We'll get rid of it. Cut it all out. This is just undercoat. Yeah, it's holding on for dear life. Yeah. Acting like a balloon, just it's rotting everything. Trapping moisture. Yeah. Hold it in there. Got this grommet. Oh, good. Yeah, save that. Yeah, grommet. Save that, Wallace. This still. That's still cool. structural-ish. So, do we like pull the other tire and then see how low we can get it with one side? Yeah, we, yeah, we can do that. Is that easier? Or uh, do all the work on one side and then we only have to cut the other side once? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that makes sense. Because if we have to move the arch and stuff, I don't know right, it's then, easier. Yep. Can do. In order to properly situate and locate that wheel opening, we had to lower it down to the lowest point so that tire is just going to fill that void. And then we can figure out how far back we have to move the section that we cut off. So we lowered it down and then we also moved the axle back so that it clears that, that section of wheel arch that's by the door. Now that we have it in this full bump location, we can start to design the suspension. We know how far back the axle is, we know how far up it can go, and we're just taking measurements and entering that information into the same calculator that we used when we designed the front suspension. So we can figure out all of our angles, all of our mounting locations, and then Mike's actually starting to design some of that truss stuff here as well. We determined that we're going to need to mount the upper links on top of that axle 
So we're building a truss that's going to bridge over across the differential. And he's just inputting some of that information. We're taking measurements. And he's using Fusion 360 to design a truss that's going to bridge that gap for us. Why are you coming home? I don't know. Look who showed up. <laughs> My friend Steve Shepard came over to play with some fender things. He does a lot of metal shaping at his house, power hammer, English wheel, all that sort of stuff. So kind of going back to basics using the primitive tooling that I have, but put in some effort and was able to get some progress done reuniting that fender with a little bit more space. <laughs> have come a ways. We've done stuff. Nice rear truss action here. Yep. Front and the back and then we reclaimed some tabs for the uh, the center and this will get plated in after but that way it gives it some some shear plates in it for when there's tabs on top of here. So all in all, not too bad. We're nearing the end of our time for this segment. Mike Day is going to travel home. Yep. We did uh did get quite a bit accomplished though. We did a bunch of things in a bunch of different areas. So there's no like one completed thing, but uh, we knocked out a handful of tests that are otherwise a bunch of work. So, <laughs> not too bad. No. Steve knocked out the majority of the spender. Oh yeah, the beautiful and talented Steve Shepard came by. Yeah. Did the, widened this wheel opening. Yep, laid out the groundwork for this guy. Yep. A couple little, couple little bells to do and probably a little more hammer action, but... Big improvement. That wheel is going to fit nice. nice. That like, made all the difference. We'll lower that down so you guys can check that out. Yeah, we're going to need some nice shots of that. Yeah, this truss. We have the rear suspension. We can see here the work that Steve was doing, opening up this wheel well. This is about ride height right now. and It, it does look really nice. And then we've increased our, our angle in the back for departure. So pretty easy to come off of obstacles without hanging up the rear end. I'm going to lower this down and you can get an idea of how nicely it fits when it's all the way at full bump. So now this is full bump. Just barely touching that ridge. And then we have, we have room in the front and in the rear. And it really just changes the look of the rear of this vehicle. There were discussions about moving this wheel well up in the rear, but because we'd have to change the arc in the door and then the front, it just seemed like a lot of work for not that much gain. So we ended up going with this, this current system. And if you look at the overall height of the vehicle at full bump, it is pretty low. That's pretty tucked in there. And the wheel well really matches the size of the tire now. So I think we, I think we made a good compromise. We'll be able to keep it low, have a good amount of up travel, and it looks great. We're using a different suspension design in the rear of the Trooper. The name of this style of suspension is trailing arm. And the primary difference is where the coilover is mounted. We have a coilover that's mounted on the arm instead of on the axle. So the basic layout, we have our same Johnny joint here. It's able to, it's like a Heim joint with polyurethane on either side. Then we will have a double adjuster that goes in place here. And then on the other end we have our bushing 
and here's our bracket that's going to be welded on the frame. Now the reason that this is bent is to allow this coilover to mount below the center line. If there was a straight tube that went through here and the coilover was mounted above that line, right, it would want to roll. It would want to kick itself off the top of it. But instead we, we bent this and we're able to lower that mounting point down which makes it stable so it's not wanting to roll off the top of, of the tube. What you gain by going to the setup is if you think about the way this is moving on an arc, the further up the arm you go, the more travel you get at the end with the same length shock. So this amount of stroke here, this is a 14 inch stroke shock, with this being mounted one foot up the arm here, we're able to get 18, well really close to 18 inches of travel at this rear joint. So it's not a drastic trailing arm, if you look at a trophy truck, the, the, the coilover would be mounted much further up the arm. But it does give us a little bit more action. And they look awesome. On a trophy truck or even some Ultra 4 vehicles, in addition to this coilover, they'll also have a triple bypass shock. We did leave the location for one here, although in the current setup we're just going to be utilizing that for a limit strap which prevents the suspension from dropping out too far. I don't really need 18 inches of rear suspension travel so I'm going to be using that limiting strap here to prevent it from using the full motion of the shock. This is the truss that goes across the rear axle which is a sterling out of a Super Duty. Mike spent a bunch of time designing this and then notching it in to fit really nice. And the reason we have this is so we can mount those upper suspension links to the top of the truss here. It gives us a nice mounting location. As well as in this area here, right below the frame, we're going to be able to mount our bump stops and they'll actually hit on top of this truss. It does add some strength to the axle. This axle tube is a smaller diameter than the front. So this does add some strength for that when we're jumping it. Huge shout out to KG Performance Solutions in Fitzwilliam, New Hampshire for letting me use the plasma table, cut these parts out. I work at KG during the week and as well as being a full service shop, we do a lot of performance work, fabrication. So if you have a crazy project that you want like this done, bring it on by the shop and we can come up with a plan. So it's with some sadness here, Mike Day's time with the Super Trooper is coming to an end. I only had a few days to spend here, but it's always a great time hanging out, building stuff in the shop. So, absolutely. We were able to get some stuff done, um, designed some parts in Fusion 360, which is very capable, although completely abstract for me coming from SolidWorks. There's like a, a handful of little quirks on top of like using a, lot, like a Mac I've never used, yeah. no mouse. Uh, so, all things considered, doing that with just tape measure stuff, we got a, a fair amount of things cut and fit pretty well. So. Yeah, we we kind of focused on the rear suspension, yes. and like in order to get that to happen, we had to be able to fit the tire all the way up into the wheel well, which it wouldn't fit at the full bump location that we wanted to run. So we had to cut part of that away, you know, cut the body away so we could fit the tire, and then get some measurements off of that. Um, Steve Shepard came by, did some sheet metal work there to piece that back together while Mike and I were kind of focusing on doing these rear suspension bits. Yep. So yeah, we've got a bunch of stuff cut out. We figured out all the link geometry first, make sure all the, the numbers make sense, anti-squat, roll center, rear steer, all that's pretty well dialed. Then we were able to kind of figure out where we wanted things and run the numbers on that. We've got the coilover mounted partway up the control arm, so we get a little more travel. Not that you really need it, but it's cool, and it packages the coilover in a more convenient place in the vehicle. So uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, we were able yeah. to kind of figure out the geometry and cut all this one shot, which is great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we ran over to uh, Big Industries. Yep. And we're able to bend up this tubing. Right. Two inch quarter wall. Serious business. So. 
Yeah, appreciate the use of that uh, that vendor over there. Yep, that helped us out. Yep. So, we got some link mounts here. Everything's cut, ready to go. We got to finish up finish up a couple things on the rear axle yep. before we can tack those on. But and you guys have already seen the truss that's on the rear axle. Yep, that's all just kind of tape measure, quick stuff in Fusion 360. For the most part, it worked out. I had to trim a couple things, mostly tape measure error on my part. But you got it close. I mean, it, was it was pretty close. Really close. I would have liked a little closer, but hey, you know, it's kind of yeah, late. We, we don't all have 3D scanners. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's what I'm used to. So, yeah. you know, tape measure's great. You get everything yeah. done. Uh, I had to spend a little bit more time with it fit a little nice in the first shot. Just had to grind a couple corners. Fits pretty good otherwise. Yeah. So that's on there, tacked in. Still have to figure out the top side of it, but everything's there in the locations. We're going to want the upper link mounts, so the reinforcement is there in that truss. So it should be a really rugged setup. Yeah, oh, I'm super psyched to be able to have the help coming out here. It definitely helps push things along. It speeds up the whole process. And some of these things are a lot easier to do with two people. Just going back and forth, measuring and getting angles and kind of bouncing ideas around. We came up with uh, the solution. I mean, designing this first suspension was fast. Yeah. It went together yeah. really quick. Yeah, just having another person to like bounce ideas off of and just be like, hey, what's that number? And just like, you know, yeah. should what if we tried this? And yep. That's, that's a great thing to have. The brainstorming aspect of this is huge. Yeah. And working on fun stuff. This thing's going to be rad. Yeah. Super into it. So. <laughs> it's definitely going to be cool. And I appreciate all the help. Yeah, me too. Cool. Well, we'll be, uh, I'll be hammering away on this. Mike's going back, but yep. we'll be back at it next week. More info for you guys. Yeah. Cool. <laughs>